All right, um, Claudia is here with us. Uh, students with diverse needs need legislative protections in Bill 72. Saw Graham Steele had, over the weekend, talked about sitting down with a, well, a glass of wine and Bill 72 to go looking through the language. And, uh, well, almost 24 hours ago, he noticed that there was a, a lack of language about, um, well, <laughs> about inclusive education. Uh, was this by design or was this over, uh, oversight? Well, uh, students with diverse needs need legislative protections of Bill 72. Claudia Chender is the NDP spokesperson for education. Claudia, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks, Sheldon. Thanks uh, for having me. Uh, thanks for stepping out of uh, the law amendments. It looks like it's going to be a long, long day. You've got uh, three hours of the House after that, eh? That's right. Uh, what is it that you know, it sounded like? It sounded like, I know Dave Wright wanted me to finish the paragraph I was just reading, um, the Liberal Education Reform Act, did, was there an amendment made? Did they, did they talk about inclusive education? Was that added this morning? Yeah, so Sheldon, this is a, a really interesting issue. You mentioned Graham Steele posted about it yesterday, but I actually received a call about 48 hours before that from Richard Starr, who incidentally had been one of the early advocates for the original language in the current Education Act. Uh, so in the current Education Act, it says that students, uh, sh school boards shall provide opportunities to educate students with special needs within regular instructional settings with their peers and age. So that really forms the basis of how we think about inclusive education. Um, Richard noticed and you wouldn't have known it just from reading the act, but knowing that that was in the old act, that that language was no longer in what we now have as Bill 72 before us. Um, and so he and then Graham and many others, uh, including ourselves, raised the alarm. Um, the government brought an amendment about an hour ago um, uh, to amend Bill 72 to say that regional centers, which are taking the place of school boards um, shall have as their ob one of their objects to do the same thing. It mirrors the same language. So, you know, they seem to be attempting to fix it. I am, I will note that the language is not as strong. So to say that legally to say that, you know, a group or body shall do something is much different than to say it has it as one of its objects. But clearly, they're trying to remedy this situation. What does it say to you, Claudia, that as this piece of legislation went through first and second reading into law amendments on the uh, in just hours as the public starts to speak up, government realizes or recognizes that in spite of the premier saying that uh, inclusion is going to be a huge component moving forward, they didn't put it in this piece of legislation. You know, Sheldon, it's, I have to say it's mystifying because. The premier and the minister have both said publicly that one of the reasons that they're dealing with administrative reforms first, even though the vast majority of people concerned about education are crying out for classroom issues, including inclusion, uh, one of the reasons they're doing the administrative piece first is to lay the groundwork for the results of the Commission on Inclusion. And none of us can make heads or tails of that because there's nothing in here that looked, has looked like it does anything for or against it. So I think it's very strange that we would have gotten this far. We went through a bill briefing. The fact that that um, provision was not pointed out to anybody, I think, is um, an oversight to be kind on the point of the, part of the government. <laughs> and, uh, and the fact that we got this far just shows, you know, what I've said a few times now, which is that this bill, you know, they're counting on it being just long enough, just complicated enough, and just kind of boring enough, frankly, to the, you know, average person that, that they'll be able to slip it through. Uh, slip it through. It's a majority government. And Claudia, we've spoken to that point on the show yeah. earlier today. And it's obvious that, you know, government has the numbers. They, they can move this bill forward. In, in your estimation, this, the people who are showing up to law amendments, um, has anyone spoken in favor of it? Uh, Paul Bennett, as you mentioned uh, earlier in your show, has spoken in favor of it. But that's what Paul Bennett does. He speaks in favor of what the government says. Um, but in the four hours I spent in that room, he was the only person I saw speak in favor of the specific changes. Many people agree that changes are needed, 
um, myself included. You know, I think we need reform at all levels of our education system, but I don't see this bill as educational reform. I see it as a streamlining and centralizing of education services that are of a piece with the way the government has, you know, streamlined and centralized everything else, or at least made big efforts to. Claudia Chender here with us. Uh, the Reform Act, uh, Education Reform Act, um, it, it's it's li- it's going to be sooner rather than later. Uh, what are you hoping for those people who have stood up to, to have their voice or have their perhaps opposition to this bill recognized? What are you telling them today? Well, I mean, I think what the majority of people are saying uh, in law amendments, on social media, wherever anyone will listen, is please wait. Please wait to pass this bill until we can see the results of the report from the Commission on Inclusion, and you can meaningfully consult with stakeholders in the system. So although that's becoming increasingly unlikely, as you say, Sheldon, it's a majority government, um, I think people are still clinging to that hope, and we're certainly still advocating for that. More specifically to um, the disability community and students with diverse needs, I think in addition to making sure that that guarantee is in the new bill as strongly as the old one, particularly if it's to pass, the other piece I've heard from that community is um, the need to have first voice, so someone from the disability community, um, on this new provincial advisory committee. Um, That it's not enough for them to say, you know, this is all about inclusion. They need to be, you know, there's an adage, nothing about us without us. So they need to really be talking to the frontline um, members of that those communities, whether it be the disability community in this case, or many have raised the alarms with the dissolution of school boards about the African Nova Scotian and Mi'kmaq communities, um, that we need all of the diversity of our province represented in a meaningful way um, in decision making um, in the education system. And a lot of people are really concerned about that. Dartmouth South MLA and the NDP spokesperson for education. Claudia Chender, we'll let you get back into that room and to hear more from parents and teachers and others. Okay, thanks so much, Sheldon. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye.